Okay, so today we're answering questions from our Facebook group. These are from SaaS founders who are asking questions about their product or problems they're having with their software. Uh, so we're trying to give them our best answer. The first question from Neil Morgan is, what's the best practice way to give helpful hints and instruction on more complex views to help new people that don't become annoying for more advanced users who don't need the help anymore? Okay, so this is a problem where you have a complex product or a complex feature. You have new users who need to get onboarded and learn and understand how to use the feature and then existing users who probably already know or they have some experience with, with this product or feature. So what we might usually do is design two different flows. One onboard new users to the feature um, but for existing users, we might um, present a different journey, right? We'll give them like an introduction to the feature um, or it could be something that's designed that's on the screen, but they can ignore it. Say like a little notification on the right hand side of the screen. And it says, if you need, if you would like to know more about how to use this, or if you need help with this feature, click here and they might go into uh, a knowledge base or video or something like that. But then for a new user, I think we'd design an onboarding flow, right? So for new users, we also design empty states, right? So when a new user comes into the platform, it's usually quite empty. So we use these spaces instead of making them unengageable and like just waiting for data to be filled in. We explain a little bit what the feature is about and we place a CTA that might lead them to where they can start actually doing things. So it's a, it's a subdued way of doing onboarding without, you know, much uh, intervention. Yeah. Like it gives us a chance to introduce the feature and make make the user excited about it. Like we'll show it off. Here's what it does. We'll have like a description and introduction to it, maybe a video on how to use it. And then like it gets started now and we we might take them into a flow like a uh, with a a step-by-step a, a -step flow of getting them into using that feature. So a new user might need that, but an existing one maybe just needs some tool tips around that screen where they hover over a certain element and it gives them a little description of what it is or how to do it or an optional walkthrough yeah you can like also that. you can also do things like for example a two-step uh trigger based onboarding this is basically the first step of the onboarding is very simple very concise and dismissible so that if the seasoned user doesn't want to engage with that they just click it off and it's not too intrusive but, you know, it has a link to a deeper uh, part of knowledge. Like it can be linked to your knowledge base or it can be also just a, a deeper um, part of the onboarding. So if the user is new, maybe they are interested in that feature a little bit more and they engage then with the second step of that uh, trigger based onboarding. It's all about basically not getting too much on the face of your user and letting them decide, pace yourself, pace your information to the to the to the right. user's job. Yeah, so they can choose how much yeah. onboarding they get. Like that that first step could be, hey, do you want to know more about how to use this feature? And if they click on that, they go to step two where there's yep. more description and video, something like that. Yeah, I think that's generally how we'd approach it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Question two. What are the top UI UX frictions, mainly in the onboarding floor and the product in general? Frictions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Peaches mentioned here about sign up and then during onboarding, there were many. Yeah. This is like a very general question. Yeah. But especially, you know, it, it mentions onboarding, but then it goes into in general in a product, which could be endless, right? Yeah. So, um, the main friction that we're always working with is <clears throat> okay, first of all, it's getting users to sign up and take a free trial. So, um, that's usually starting before they see the product on the website or even on marketing materials that they've seen. But when we design a sign up screen, we just keep it like completely simple as possible, the minimum information as possible, mm -hmm. right? And then the next major point of friction is during that onboarding flow. Like what we're always trying to do in general is remove as much complexity as possible, make it as simple as possible. We also want to rem remove like options so that the user doesn't have to make any decisions. Like the flow is really clear. It's like step by step, do this and then this, and we're guiding them really clearly. So 
We don't want them to have to think too much. We don't want to give them anything that feels like work. We are simplifying it and trying to make it enjoyable so that they're engaged and they're clicking on the next step because they're kind of anticipating, oh, what's going to happen next? Oh, I'm looking forward to getting to this bit so I can complete, you know, this task. Yeah, actually, it's one of the problems that we usually find is that because the product has so many stakeholders, right? Every stakeholder wants a piece of the first engagement with the user. And what we find is like really complex forms that the user has to fill in because, you know, the marketing department needs some data, then the tech department needs some other data, etc. So what we try to do is just to help the team to prioritize because the user needs to go from zero to value as fast as possible. And if we can, if we can, you know, place some of that recovery of data after the user have signed up, then that's positive for the departments and for the user because the user won't get tired of the of the registering process and it will get to value and enjoy and understand why that platform is actually the the right platform for them. Yeah, like we're we're trying to remove steps and remove work. Sometimes you do like need data if we're trying to personalize their account and we're like, oh, why are you using this? They might have some options, but we try and keep them, first of all, like engaging and fun. So it's not like a boring form where well, they're filling in information. Maybe we get showing graphics and they can click on something and it's just quick. Um, uh, and, and we're removing steps where, wherever possible. Another, another common UX, UI friction that we find is the way things are grouped in the platform. So basically discoverability. Yeah. Like when you're working on your products so close all the time with your tech leads and with all of the team, you're used to some jargon that you've like developed, you know, in time. And sometimes it's difficult to, you know, to step a little bit back and realize that, you know, your new users or your even your existing users, when they come in your platform, they don't really understand, you know, the words that you've placed or in the order that you've placed. Because sometimes when you're developing your platform, you kind of like start cramping things together that maybe they don't quite have to do with each other. So some of the work that we do sometimes is to um, analyze this navigability or like this discoverability and then try to like group things that make sense a little bit more together, change the labels so that they are more approachable to your users and also place things, you know, like more like redistribute the value that you have on your platform in a way that is more uh, clean, clearer that separates things uh, and so that the user knows that when they're in one part of the platform, they're dealing with a focus of that platform. And then when they're jumping onto the settings section, for example, is all about settings. So, you know, keeping things in order, we also sometimes help uh, yeah. reorder the value, valuable features. Answer to you, like you talked about, which you've said the best way to know your biggest friction points is to observe your users during onboarding and then interview them afterwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes in a product, we don't always know what the biggest friction point for the users are. So like we do some kind of research or UX work. Um, we would typically observe their their sessions. So you could do session recordings and watch how users go through the onboarding, see if they have any areas where, that are tricky or where they drop off. Uh, and another thing that we often do is interview users to understand where they're struggling. Like, is there anything that they were expecting that didn't happen? Or was there something unexpected that was frustrating during onboarding or something like that? So you don't always know all the friction moments until you um, explore and, and do a bit of research with the users. So that often helps too. Yeah, good. Okay, let's move on to the last question. So. Ben asks, what design elements can you include that are proven to increase conversion? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so um, we're going to focus on like free trial to paid conversions because that's like the biggest, one of the biggest areas that uh, companies we work with want to improve. Um, so typically we've got things like when you land in a dashboard, we might have a countdown for the free trial, like how many days are left on your free trial. Uh, and the psychology of that is trying to get them to get the most out of it during that period, but also there's a call to action to upgrade there. So it's kind of like a constant reminder. You're in the free trial, like, you know, get some value out of it and then prepare them mentally for upgrading. Yeah. Um, we've also quite often will use widgets, um, say on a dashboard or an overview screen. We'll 
present premium features and we'll have a widget that introduces it, explains what it is and what it does, and may have a flow to encourage an upgrade. If you want to use this feature, uh, I click here to upgrade. Um, so we'll do things like that. Um, yeah, for me, it's all about the visual cues that you place in the right points. So if you want to upgrade your users from free to paid, you need to let them know where that pay next value step is. And then you can place, you know, like the visual cues can be something as simple as a little text saying this is a premium feature. And when the, when the, when the user clicks on it, then they are redirected to, a, to an upgrading flow that usually we try to keep robust and the same throughout all of the visual cues uh, spread around the platform. So it's important that the user, whenever they want to do something uh, in regards to upgrading, it's just the same flow, it's something known, it's like the you, you will find the same flow here and there so that it reduces the, the amount of thinking, oh yeah, this is basically the next step of value that I, I want to do. Yeah. And the other important thing if it is possible, is to keep that flow within the platform because then you avoid take your, taking your users out into a website and then, you know, like they might get distracted or like basically you just took them out of your yeah. platform and out of the job that they were trying to accomplish, right? So uh, if you can keep them in by including your upgrading flow within your platform, that is also very useful because they can like check it. If they're convinced about it, they will go through it. Very simple flow, hopefully. Um, if they're not convinced at that point, that's fine. They will find another visual trigger somewhere else when they need to like upgrade, but then they can go back to their... So we reduce the friction between the the job that the user is trying to do and upgrading, right? So yeah. the friction as it goes, the easier will be for them yeah. to... And that's part of that upgrade flow being consistent. It looks and feels like the rest of the product. It's not like jarring where it suddenly has a different, like sometimes we see in products like it suddenly has a different look or a feel and it's like, oh, this is weird. You know, we want it to be seamless and, and frictionless. Another thing that we often do is like you were just saying about the contextual uh, play, it's all about where you show the upgrade, you know. Say the user's trying to do a task or and it includes some kind of premium element, we might show a, a payable. So, those interactions are really helpful. And then another contextual thing that we might use is to ask them to invite more users. Uh, so, you know, when they add seats, usually that in involves an upgrade, uh, paying for an extra uh, user in their account. And another one is sometimes upgrading usage. So like they might be performing a task when they need more storage or memory, or they might need more usage of a certain feature. And that's another time we'll remind them. So these little contextual paywalls uh, that take them into an upgrade flow really help. Yeah. It's all about being clear on when do you want them to upgrade to the next value tier. I don't know if you've answered this, but do people sometimes, because people know you can say like, oh, upgrade now, or this is a countdown timer. Can you go like too far the opposite way and be like two all the time? Yeah, definitely. Like you want the free trial to deliver value to the users, right? So the whole point of free trial is so that they get the sense of the feeling of, oh, this product solves our problem and we get value out of it. So we want that to be like the, the focal point. Um, and if you're bombarding them constantly with like pricing and upgrades, it's a bit overwhelming and it, and you know, that, that will affect their experience. So we want to do it kind of like suggestively, subtly at the right moment. That's why the, this contextual element helps. Um, and we don't want it just constantly in their face, like every time they log in, we want to do it in an elegant way that just reminds them now and then, yeah. that, hey, these things are here. If you want more use out of the product, you can... Bear in mind that the competition out there is fierce. Like, I mean, you are not just trying to sell your product, you're competing against other products that are offering also base value. So if you become then a selling machine and the other products are actually helping your user to solve their problems, then you, you know, by being too insistent, you subtract from their experience. They might go to someone else that actually allows them to do their job. So it's about being, you know, delicate about it. It's about knowing where to where to ask and knowing exactly where the value that they might they want to pay for is, so that you can focus your efforts there, yeah. and then leave them with a good base that allows them to interact with your company and with your product for the longest time possible yeah. until they reach that point to value, yeah. 
<laughs> Yay! Yay! Hey, so if you have any product or UX, UI design related questions, uh, drop a note in the comments below and we'll get back to you to answer any problems you're having with your product.